to you for uh, literally a minute about beetle banks. I expect many of you have heard about them, but perhaps uh, you've never really um, got close to one and found out exactly what they're for. We're very interested in insects um, on farmland because we've talked already about farmland birds being dependent, their chicks being dependent on insects. And when you look at insects and where they go in the winter months, then we've looked around the outsides of fields in the tussocky grass margins and that's where they all are. And we get big numbers of them overwintering, hibernating there over winter. But in the spring, when we followed them back out into the fields, we found that after about 200 yards, 200 metres, there was quite a big tail off in the numbers of insects that we found out in the middle of fields. And of course, a lot of these insects are munching aphids, so they're real friends of the farmers, as well as feeding those birds that live out in the middle of fields, like the, the plumbers we were talking about earlier, and skylarks and species like that. So, we designed a bank simply because of drainage purposes, and we planted grass on it. The best grass probably are the tussocky ones, things like Coxford and Timothy. Um, and we run it up, all the way up across the field. Notice we haven't joined it at each end. And that's really simply so that the farmer can continue to farm the field as one. We have to split it in half. So it's an island bank running all the way along. Once we've established it, we leave it. We don't cut it, we want big tusky grasses. Because that's where these insects go, little things like little caribou beetles. And they tuck right down inside the tussocks. And if you really want the guys amongst you, if you really want to make yourselves uh, unpopular at home, come out here in the middle of winter, January time, and dig a nice clod up, and take it back in, and put it next to the radiator, or even better, if you've got an arger, put it on top of the arger, and then just sit and watch. And as it warms up, the whole thing starts to come alive, and all these, all these overwintering insects will start to crawl out, and they don't cover the whole kitchen, which is where you become unpopular. Um, but it is amazing, 1,500 per square metre of these overwintering insects in these beetle banks. Absolutely incredible. And then, of course, the following spring, they start to spill out across the whole field, and they've now got good coverage of, of insects feeding farm and birds, um, but also munching aphids for you. So they are really, really brilliant. We've also discovered that things like grey partridge love nesting on them, and because we haven't joined them to each end, when a stoat or a weasel or a rat comes trotting around the outside of the, of the field, it goes straight off. If we joined this to the headland, right, to the edge, when it got to the junction, half of them would probably come along and work the, be the, the beetle bank out. And so for that reason, we know that birds that are nesting on here actually have less predation pressures on them. And the thing that led us to that was actually harvest mice. We were doing some work on harvest mice and we found that there are nine times as many harvest mice using these beetle banks as there are around the outside of the field. And it's probably simply because the ones around the outside of the field are getting taken by things like stoats and weasels. So they were fantastic for many other things, uh, despite just insects. So that's beetle banks, a, a short scenario of, of how they work and what they do. And again, they are funded under the stewardship scheme.